the day. On tonight's episode of The Breakout Barn, we're looking for a wild Datsun in its natural habitat, the shop. And I think that we found an excellent specimen to share with y'all. And what I'm hoping is that we can sneak up on it and continue to do an Australian accent without getting too southern, but I think it's, it's all going to blend together. Oh, yes. Crikey. We've spotted it for sure. Oh, I'm going to try and get close. Don't do this at home. Especially if you don't have a tetanus shot. Oh, yes. It is indeed. The wonder of it all. The wonder. The wonder, mate. Whew. So, welcome back to the Breakout Barn, where I say so and all right and um way too much. Uh, the game show where the scores don't matter and points are things that you get on your license. Uh, what we have here tonight, the same shit we've been working on for like, I don't know, three weeks now? I think it's been three weeks, maybe a month, probably a month. Uh, again, calendar somewhere, I think it's mid-April at this point. Uh, where we left off, Dash is flocked. It's in great shape. Ended up looking really nice uh, after everything was dusted off. Just to be a bit of a tease, I am not going to show it to you until it's back in the car. Uh, also, because I wrapped it and put it in storage. So, go me. I got some pictures, though. Maybe I'll pop one up on the screen. Looks pretty good. We're going to give it the, uh, the Joey from Friends. Hey, oh, wait, that's Fonzie. Uh, wrong Italian. So what we're going to do this time around is racking my brain. And I believe that in order for me to dive in and fix these floors, I want to get all of this stuff off of the firewall. And it only makes sense that we should just pull the motor in the trance, right? Because, I mean, they're clearly in the way of me taking off the HVAC units uh, and, and all of that good stuff. So, um, I think we're going to start by pulling the motor in trance tonight. Uh, first things first, I'm expecting it to take entirely longer than it needs to. Um, and also not that long at all, mostly because overhead gantry, cherry pickers in the corner, somewhere over there, I really need to clean up a little bit. Uh, organized chaos is typically how I operate. And this is a little bit too much chaos, a little too less organization. Goddamn lights are going out already. I need to speak to someone's manager about this shit. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to do tonight, oh my God, they are relentless. It's more lights. Uh, anyways, what I'm going to do tonight is uh, set up auxiliary lighting and take the hood off, give us some, uh, some nice access here, um, and then I'm going to pull the motor in trance. Uh, I made the decision... L24 is just too much work to get the power out of this that I want. Uh, you know, I, I said earlier it was going to be a car that I want to drive. Um, the, I had a bunch of you try and bully me into keeping the L24 and the SUs, and uh, I am going to keep them. I'm not going to get rid of them, so that if somebody does want to uh, convert this back to um, to its original roots down the line, then... Then I'll have them and there'll be numbers matching and, and blah, 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 whatever. But uh, for me, it was either spend like three grand on fuel injection or put something reliable that can make some power, sound really cool, and, um, you know, starts every time you turn the key. So, yes, it's pretty. Yes, it looks like it belongs. Yes, it's simple. It's just old. It's really old. I don't know if some of you are some of you are probably old enough to, to get this reference, and some of you um, probably just think I'm talking about a rapper or something. But Old Yeller, that, that scene where they uh, they take him out back behind the shed. Um, I'm not saying that it's that time, but it's probably close to that time. So the anemic 140 horse when it left the factory new in '71. 
uh, because this is an early 72 from the best that I could tell, so it was most likely manufactured in late 71. I'm pretty sure that of that 140 horse, if I got this thing up and running, rebuild the motor, everything, I'd probably see like 125 horse, I don't know, maybe, and then uh, constantly be dealing with two 50-year-old carburetors that people love, apparently, you know, go you if you're if you're down with that. If you like fixing your car more than you like driving your car, keep on keeping on. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, but there's just too much space. It's just it's just it's just too good, too good of a fit. It's too good of a fit. So since we're pulling out the motor tonight and the trans and pretty much the drive line back to the differential, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the motor and what we need to make this thing actually fit. So pretty well documented these swaps in. Uh, just kidding, there's like really no documentation at all. Um, most people just pop up on the internet and they're like, hey dude, check out my LS Swap 240, bro. And then like 55 old guys hop on a Facebook group and yell about how you ruined a Series 1 and it's crap and how they wouldn't pay anything for the car. And then the car magically sells for like 35 grand two months later on Bring a Trailer. So... What we have is a 4.8 LR4 truck motor out of a 2003 uh, GMC Savannah van with 56,000 miles on it. Um, I found this particular motor in Massachusetts from a dude that uh, had a tree fall on his van in one of the bizarre microbursts that we had. And he was parting out the van after he bought it back from insurance. Um, Turns out nobody likes 4.8s, which is a shame because they rev for days if you take care of the valve train. So I paid 100 bucks for this bad boy. So uh, after paying 100 bucks for the bad boy, I got it home, took the heads off, uh, went through the valley gaskets, went through basically everything from the oil pan up. And uh, just wanted to make sure that what I had bought was actually running or, or in, in running condition. Uh, I didn't hear it run in the van because there was, quite frankly, not much left of it at all. Uh, but for 100 bucks, you can't go wrong, right? So I went through, regasketed basically the whole motor. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I was, I was planning on stripping it down to a short block, shipping it off, having it rebearing. And I mean, it was just in too good of condition. I, like, I've, actually, I got some pictures that I can, I can throw in here. You could have, I mean, not that you would want to, I guess if you wanted like an oily taco or something, you could eat tacos off of the interior of this block. If you're not familiar with the LR4, they did not have an issue with ground clearance. So what they did was put like a, I believe it's an eight and a quarter inch sump on these rear oil pans and the, the windage tray and, and uh, oil pickup are to match. Um, we do not have that much space in this guy, this little guy over here. So what we need to do is we need to swap out the oil pan for one that's actually going to fit. And in uh, the best of my measurements from what I, what I could see, we need one with like a six inch sump, which happens to be a Camaro F body uh, pan or a, uh, what they call a bat wing pan, which came in the Corvettes. And uh, what I found was Camaro pans are pretty cheap. So one of those is showing up. Uh, it's just a factory pan. It's just, it's not a modified pan or anything like that. Uh, don't have the, the use case justification to drop 600 bucks on a, on a fabricated pan. So, um, cast aluminum ones from the factory should be fine. It'll look a lot cleaner than this one. That's obviously seen 52,000 in, in 18 years, 17 years of, uh, of new England winters. Uh, the other things that we need to do in a stock truck configuration, the alternator is what's called a high mount. And that guy typically is somewhere up here. Um, the company, I forget the name of it, uh, I'll throw it in one of those little blurbs that I do when I remember, makes these brackets, relocation brackets. Um, so what you do is you swing this guy down, you drill and tap out the hole here that's actually in the casting on the face of the motor, but is, is not drilled or tapped. Um, run the bolt in and ta-da, you have alternate, oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. You actually have to notch out the casting a little bit here with the grinder. Uh, it's just a superficial uh, extra casting on the uh, on the motor itself, so n really not a big deal. You're not harming the structural integrity at all, um, but alternator fits. So, ta-da! Next up, uh, F-body water pump. The truck water pump, sitting here in my nice coolant bucket. 
Let's see if you can discern the difference there. Pulley on the shark water pump, super short. Uh, but ironically enough, it sticks out further. So by moving to an F-body water pump or an LS1 style water pump, which is super nice, bolts right on, you get a wider pulley uh, that's also more compact, sits in line with the, the alternator and blah, blah, blah. I haven't swapped it out yet, but I have a Camaro dampener as well. Uh, the truck dampener just simply will not work. Um, I am not concerned with power steering because this car weighs like 2,300 pounds and uh, I actually have arms that work. So uh, we're good to go. This is, this is going to be it. Um, as far as the remainder of the accessories on it, these things were individual coil pack controlled. Um, I have the, the whole engine harness and the, uh, and the ECU is sitting over there in a pile of boxes of stuff that I moved around so that I can make space to pull the motor and tranny and the lights back. Congratulations. I have the truck intake on it right now. And as you can see, the truck intake is quite tall. There have been numerous smarter people than I, uh, people with degrees in fluid dynamic engineering and, and the likes that have flow tested these intakes um, and, and dyno tested them. Truck intakes actually flow extremely well, uh, ex especially relevant to the LS1 and the LS2 intakes. The LS2 intakes are actually trash is my understanding. Um, if you have one, rip, sorry, get a new one. Uh, so I'm gonna see what we have for clearance there's actually a pretty tall space and, and the nice bulge in the hood because the slant six that's in there is, is pretty tall. Sorry, the inline six that's in there and leaning a little bit is, uh, is a pretty tall motor to begin with. Um, so I, I think that if I can get the LR4 back far enough in the engine bay, which it is a fairly sh short motor uh, for all intents and purposes, I think that I might be able to clear this. If I can, great. The LR4 intake makes, uh, it, it has a phenomenal torque band uh, for, for you know, city driving, for, for ripping around stoplight to stoplight. Um, and it's great because I already have it and I have some fresh new injectors and, and all the stuff that I need to make this thing function correctly. Uh, aside from that, I have a built world-class T5 that came out of uh, but I don't know, a Camaro. I think it was a 90, I think it was a 90 actually. It was before they got round and dumb looking. So it was either 90 or 91. Uh, again, T5s, nobody wants them because everyone's like, oh, T56s are the greatest thing in the world. Um, sure. If you need to launch your 5,000 pound F body on your 305 tires to try and run a 12 second quarter, then you need a T56 for again, a 23 and change hundred pound car. T5 will hold up just fine, particularly because I have that thing over there if I really want to do some flat foot shifting. Uh, in order to put a T5 to an LR4, what you need is uh, what's called a Chevy Big Block bell housing. It's a 621 casting number. Um, you can pick them up for like, I don't know, 160 bucks, 180 bucks. Uh, brand new. There's there's repops that are made everywhere. Bolts right up to the T5. Uh, as long as you have a 26 spline input shaft T5, you can make this work. So I'm going to go over this again in detail when it when it shows up in like two days. But uh, so you go LR4 621 bell housing T5 sitting over there in the corner. 26 spline input shaft T5. The Fords I think were a 16 spline something like that. Uh, but the Ford T5s. You either have to change the input shaft or change the input shaft if you want to use them. So along with that, you use an LS1 flywheel pressure plate clutch and then an LS7 or CTSV. Uh, well, I guess LS7 came in the CTSV and the Z06 or, or whatever. Um, input shaft pilot bearing. And the reason for doing that is the input shaft pilot bearing for I don't know, whatever reason, on the LS7 is almost twice as thick as your standard LS1 input shaft pilot bearing. And the input shaft length on the World Class T5 is just short enough that if you don't use that extended length, width, depth, uh, pilot bearing, you, you actually fall short and you don't get full contact when you put the trans on. Uh, that leads to bad weeble wobbles and then you have a bad time and you don't drive your car that we just tried to make reliable.
So in the Camaro Trans Am Firebird WS6, whatever, F-body cars, the T5 was actually laid over at a 17-degree angle, like, like this. Um, why? Who knows? Somebody made an oops, and then they sent it. Um, but using the 621 bell housing, we should be able to get that thing close to straight up. Uh, the downside I understand is that it might make filling it a little bit difficult as obviously it was designed to be filled at a 17 degree layover angle. But since we rebuilt it on the ground out of the car, that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, if I do have to pull it, it's like, I don't know, six bell housing bolts and the thing weighs 85 pounds and it's, you know, just hump it out with two hands and drop it on bench. Um, we're obviously gonna have to make a custom trans mount for it in the back, but trans mounts pretty easy, especially when you have hockey pucks, just kidding. I'm going to use a profane bushing. Um, and we've got some custom motor mounts on the way. Uh, and by custom motor mounts, I actually mean dirty dingo. I believe they're dirty dingo is the name of the company that makes them, but they're slotted adjustable LS style universal motor mounts that are supposed to just drop right into this guy and bolt right up. We'll see. Um, if they're great, I'll tell you, if they're not, I'll tell you, uh, when we get there. So First things first, after all that talking, uh, I'm going to pop the hood off, get some of the accessories out of the way. I don't know if there's any coolant left in it. The hoses are rock hard. Like really hard. And last I looked, oh, she's crusty. Can't see anything in there. Hello. Yeah. Um, smells like coolant. Don't know if that's good or bad. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get to... Oh, light came back on. So we're going to get to yanking on this thing. And um, we'll go from there. All right. Time lapse time. Woo!
Ta-da! Nizamenya, Nanami, Namana. Or something like that. That is an empty engine bay. That is an old motor. Uh, all over my floor is a metric shit ton of ATF. I anticipated it leaking when the drive shaft slid out. I did not anticipate it Niagara Falls gushing all over my floor. So definitely going to be making a trip to the kitty litter store because um, I got a mess. Oh, hey, lights back. It's just <laughs> dead batteries and lights because, by the way, back on my Pixel, uh, which is more predictable? John Jones getting another DUI or my GoPro dying? More at 11. We are out. We are free and clear. Um, cut a couple of things. Spin through it real quick. So I ended up cutting a few things. Uh, I know you saw me at the Sawzall. And uh, those few things were exhaust, which we don't really give a shit about because it's old and crappy and it rusted off halfway anyways. Uh, the most inconvenient, I believe it's some sort of EGR bullshit pipe that goes right to the bottom of the uh, air box because um, that sucked. And then I cut off the rest of it. So that's it. Uh, everything else came off, you know, pr pretty cleanly. Uh, one of the fuel lines, actually, I lied. I cut that too. This little guy, this little guy right here. Oh, whoa, ow! Looking at the camera, not at the. Uh, this little guy right here. I, I ended up snipping because just did not want to come off that nipple. And if I pulled any harder, probably would have broken the fuel rail. Uh, easy way to get it off would be to cut this clamp off and then sip a knife down. Whatever, doesn't matter. Old, old. You're old, and you're done, and. That's about it. So, uh, thing definitely weighs more than I anticipated, but it's fine. Um, I'm honestly just kind of in awe at how much space there is here. Oh, you definitely see the trans fluid. It's a lot. There's a lot of space here. Um, there's also a lot of stuff here that we're, we're not gonna end up using. I mentioned I have that manual pedal box. Uh, I have to put that in. Definitely gonna have to figure something out with the throttle linkage as well. Um, when I initially looked at this, I did not realize that this thing uses some sort of articulated backwards, sideways. Oh, it's actually stuck against the pedal right now. Um, this guy right here. Basically that end is attached to the pedal and it goes up through this guy through this little pole, and then it transmit force through this, which goes over to a linkage that used to be right here, focus over there, thank you. And then from there, uh, it rotated this way, axially with the carbs, which used to be right here. Uh, and that's how it made vroom vroom noises. So uh, gonna have to figure something out with the, the cable for the LR4, but uh, that's gonna be easy enough. Um, if that's the hardest thing that we do, then great. Uh, also notice that somebody robbed me of my AC lines at some point or another. So even though this was a uh, apparently factory AC car, somebody cut them right there. And uh, compressor, condenser, everything was gone. Uh, not great. Also went to take the grill out because I didn't want to be leaning against it. And it turns out a couple of the bolts are, I don't know, made of titanium. Uh, burned up two drill bits trying to center drill them after they stripped out on me. Um, so going to have to deal with that at some point or another um positive note again going back to the the shape under the grime uh engine bay is in really good shape so a little bit of surface rust as we anticipated along the uh right right across the top of the frame rails a uh, little bit of bubbling that you saw it seems to be the bubbling seems to be where the clips were spot welded on it seems that that's where it actually formed uh the, the clips that are holding the wire harness um, so gonna have to address those, but it's, they're in really easy spots to address. I, you know, I, I couldn't be more thrilled. The floors are definitely ugly, but, um, engine bay is pretty nice. So since I gave the Z a funny hat, I figured that I would wear my funny hat to finish this video out. Uh, order of operations, things that's up next, uh, things that are up next, things is up next, who the, am I? Um, Waiting for the rest of the components to show up. They should be here tomorrow, the next day, two days from now, and the day after that. Uh, because even when you order three things from the same supplier, they all come from different warehouses and different boxes and different shipping services. 
Uh, one of them is actually a mystery because it got the good old USPS treatment of here's your tracking number. We showed it picked up. Nothing in the past four days. So I'm sure it's probably going to show up tomorrow or June 32nd. I don't, I don't know. So after everything shows up, we are going to be test fitting the motor and transmission, uh, making some brackets. Uh, I'm not going to dive into, into really tearing this thing apart because I want to make sure the motor transfits, that I have a general game plan of what I need to do, what, what lines I need to replace. Um, the nickel plated brake lines are actually in much better shape than I anticipated. Um, I mean like actually really good shape to the point where for like four seconds I was like maybe I won't replace them uh, and then I realized that it was brakes and they're 50 years old and uh, I would be eligible for a Darwin award if I did not so uh, definitely gonna be replacing those um, eventually don't want to do it but I'm gonna have to find out what the inside of the fuel tank looks like uh, obviously we're converting to an electric fuel pump uh, because uh, LR4 does not have a mechanical fuel pump. Um, if anyone wants to buy an L24, make me a ridiculous offer. Otherwise, I'm going to find a spot to store it. And uh, from there, once we've got motor and trans driveline uh, figured out, we're going to start blowing the rest of this chassis apart. Uh, and by blowing it apart, I mean <clears throat> dropping the, uh, the front suspension, the rear suspension, the rear end. Uh, I'm going to drop that stuff off to be uh, sandblasted and then powder coated. Um, because why not? And then, uh, and then we're going to start tackling some body work and by body work, I mean freaking floors. So, uh, thanks for tuning in till next time. I don't know what that, whatever the hell I've been doing with my hands where I point to myself and then I say I'm out. Uh, adios muchachos.